divine greetings from the sacred ancestral temple of Quatamana. We, the Quatamani royal family of the Quatamani divine social economic family community order, have a plan. Our objective is to give you something to step to. Better watch what you say and who you say to. Why did the Black Panthers activate the fear of the rise of a black messiah? Why did the title Messiah place Yeshua, also known as Jesus, in harm's way? And what causes so many to pay millions so quickly to see a Black Panther movie of today? What mass populations do not comprehend is that the Black Messiah encode is the true color of the Green Earth Solar Conscious Movement. <laughs> reality pushing a love supreme our theme beam into this supreme truth and give your soul a power boost there's a lot of people searching for a black messiah been looking and waiting for a while black messiah has come to mean one who rises up from a downtrotting and oppressed population to rescue his people from the domination and control of an oppressor and lead them forth out of the valley of the shadows of despair into some kind of promised land, a dream deferred until it has occurred. Unfortunately, nearly all of the land has been occupied by those of an oppressive nature and those well programmed by the oppressive mindset. So where the promised land actually is remains a mystery, a dream deferred until it has occurred. Anyway, the image of a returning Messiah has been used to pacify the restless and keep many waiting on the resurrection of the dead and a second coming. And the tag and label of being a Messiah has been used to get somebody targeted, somebody killed like a bunch of Carter back in the 1960 eras of COINTELPO when J. Edgar Hoover, head of the U.S. Federal Bureau of Investigation, the FBI, issued a memo stating the aim of the counterintelligence program, quote, to prevent the rise of a messiah who could unify and electrify the militant black nationalist movement, end of quote. In other words, to prevent the rise of a black messiah within and among such groups as the Black Panthers, the Mau Mau, and others. We note that the strategies of preventing, discrediting, and destabilizing any possible rising leader among an oppressed population did not start in the 60s, but was in fact a continuation of an earlier campaign. In 1919, the U.S. shook under the violent tension of what was called the Red Summer, a bloodbath era marked by lynchings, race riots, and other terrors raged by those of the white supremacy mindset. Almost a century ago, a young man from Jamaica spoke loud and proud in Liberty Hall in a place called British Honduras, today known as Belize. He later migrated to Harlem, New York, and gained popular acclaim because of his charismatic teachings and curbside messages about pride in his African heritage, economic justice, and racial equality. For this, he was targeted for investigation by the FBI. His organization, the Universal Negro Improvement Association, the UNIA, had over 30 branches and 2 million members at that time when the FBI stepped in to prevent the greater possibility of a resurrecting Messiah figure. Marcus Garvey became the man in question and his African unification teachings were viewed as a threat by Hoover, who called him, quote, the most prominent Negro agitator in the world, end of quote. Garvey's organization was infiltrated, and he was discredited, incarcerated for mail fraud, and eventually deported. It is noted that Hoover vowed to prevent anyone from ever taking Marcus Garvey's place as a, quote, Negro Moses, end of quote. 
this was the precursor that has led us all the way up to today in 2018. Beyond the counterintelligence intrigues, one of the best known Messiah figures is Jesus the Christ. The term Messiah and the term Christ means the anointed one within traditional ceremonies of anointment, signifying the esteemed role and assigned duties of priesthood, as well as signifying the anointment of kingly status and leadership responsibilities. The anointed one is he or she who answers the sacred ancestral call of the oppressed soul, a call for deliverance and salvation. Some said Jesus, a.k.a. Yeshua, was the Messiah, and others disagreed. Some sought religious power, and some sought political power, and those of the Roman Empire and its allies determined that Yeshua and his growing movement was both a religious and political threat to those who profited from the status quo. The warlords, the landlords, and overlords who felt that godly power comes from the barrel of a gun, or in this instance, a crucifixion cross. There is an even more profound meaning that is encoded within any call for the return of the Messiah and the rise of a black Messiah. The soul for call is for the holistic living unification into a higher peace conscious state of being. Harriet Tubman could have been a black Messiah figure if those whom she was attempting to free from slavery had only known how mentally enslaved they really were. And so, mental enslavement has continued to be the stranglehold of a mass population that appear to be physically free in their movement, but who are in fact enslaved by the attitudes, values, behaviors, and beliefs of an oppressive nature of consciousness. The call for a black messiah is genetically encoded within man, he, and she, a call to restore wholesome health and well-being, mentally, physically, and spiritually. The black messiah encodes is the immune defense system of the planetary body of man, he, and she, in place and intact to remove any invasive and damaging presence that attempts to infect and contaminate the soulful essence of the children of the sun. The children of the sun are in the midst of a very serious crisis, a critical and urgent condition that is destined to lead to self-destruction. If immediate corrective action is not taken by at least a sacred few, now we're speaking of the global turbulence that is already in motion and that will lead to fatal outcomes based upon the fatalistic nature of the energy that is being engaged. More importantly, however, is that we're also speaking of our natural and innate origin that existed long before the contaminated penetration of a divisive, self-destructive energy. This is personal, global, and historical. What we're saying here is that unless the children of the sun can align with the holistic living nature of divine order as forwarded in Genesis 1 that addresses the natural and innate origin of man, he, and she, the forecast is more of the same self-destructive nature into a fatal conclusion. We know that a sacred few have enough sense, common sense, to pay attention to the increasing violent tension, random acts of insanity, and in many other signs of deteriorating mental and physical sickness, disease, and disorder that is increasing on a daily basis. When we speak of the rise of the Black Messiah, we are talking about the return of the original holistic living energy that fuels the divine children of the sun and the sacred garden culture from which we come as recorded within Genesis 1, our natural and innate origin as man, he, and she. Scholars and researchers have tracked and traced this origin. One such highly acclaimed tracking is dated from 1833 by one Godfrey Higgins, who wrote during the time when slavery was still the laws of the land in the U.S., 29 years prior to the Emancipation Proclamation. Mr. Higgins states in his preface, quote, it is not likely that they will hear with pleasure that in all their researches into the history of antiquity, they have been in the wrong track. 
All this is natural and I find no fault with it. It is what I ought to expect. It is what has happened in almost every case where an individual has attacked old prejudices. And Mr. Higgins went on to state, a universal language and philosophy in very remote times pervaded the whole of the old world that it was a philosophy beautiful and fundamentally true that its professors were black in color and probably Negro in form, that it was a race of herbaceous beings killing no harmless animal, perhaps no animal whatever. In the fundamental principle, they were all the same and bore through all their different ramifications one universal family character. And later, Mr. Higgins states, these people may have flourished for a thousand or fifteen hundred years before the sun entered Aries. They were Negroes. They were Buddhists by degree, adopting the Linga and Yoni as emblems and the protecting cobra. The first book of Genesis, the Rasset or Book of Wisdom, is probably a work of these people. It contains enough to prove that its authors possess great science and a knowledge of the nature of the world and of natural philosophy. If some parts of it be obscure or not intelligible, this may be attributed to the numerous translations of ignorant persons. Before one makes some assumption that might fuel divisive hostility or any sense of opposition, we're stating clearly and beyond the shadow of a doubt that at this point in time upon the planet Earth, it is not about the color of one's skin, but rather about the state of consciousness that one lives within. In other words, we must work from where we're at within this divisive, conflict-ridden state of affairs so as to get to where we will need to be in order to secure the survival of man, he and she, as spirit-conscious Earth solar beings. The Genesis 1 consciousness and the Black Messiah consciousness are one and the same. A higher peace consciousness that was encoded in the comedic Egyptian tellings of Asar, Aset, and Nebuchadnezzar. We are speaking of the soulful essence of man, he and she, as referenced by the higher peace conscious teachings as brought forward by Asar, Aset, and Nebuchadnezzar, the Buddha, Krishna, Jainism, the Essenes, and the original teachings of Yeshua, a.k.a. Jesus. Clearly, these are all the fruits of a unified, higher peace conscious, tree of life culture that give honor to earth, wind, rain, and sun, symbolized by the sacred order of the Ankh, as encoded in Genesis 1. Divine consumption of fruit of the tree of life, divine union of masculine and feminine energy as he and she, and the forward multiplication of divinity into every offspring and vibration of the generation next through divine social economic family community order. Get it? We're talking about the nature of our origin as man, he, and she, the first nature, the true nature of man, he, and she, as divine children of the sun within the sacred garden culture from which we come. As such, we give honor to the essence of our being as the higher peace conscious embodiment of earth, wind, rain, and sun. Peace, freedom from disturbance, freedom from war and violence, freedom from civil disorder, freedom from dispute or dissension between and among individuals or groups, freedom from anxiety and distress, freedom from police brutality, freedom to live and love harmoniously as man, he, and she, freedom to grow your foods without the pesticides and poisonous insecticides that is adversely affecting our glorious planet Earth. Man, he, and she emerged unquestionably, undeniably herbivorous, plant consumers, melanin encoded, family community oriented with a focus on the generation next within a unified state of consciousness that connects all life matters within the circle of life, the sphere of holistic living energy. The melanin encodes are solar activated, much like the green pigments of chlorophyll in plants. And at this point in time upon the planet, our greatest challenge is emerging into a green earth solar conscious melanin encoded state of being as mother earth goes through her cycles of global warming. As most are aware, the earth shift and changes that we're facing is signaled by increased in solar radiation, rise in temperature, 
and the melting ice in polar regions. Melanin. The skin's brown pigment is a natural sunscreen that protects tropical peoples from the many harmful effects of ultraviolet UV rays. UV rays can, for example, strip away folic acid, a nutrient essential to the development of healthy fetuses. Yet, based on a mental entrapment and the divisive self-asserted nature of what is called white supremacy, the simple biological facts of natural selection and environmental adaptations are not comprehended. Man, he and she has existed within the confines of massive ignorance and deception regarding our origin. As a result, it is very difficult to fathom holistic living truth, even if it stares you right in the face. As the high priest of comedic Egypt said to Salon, as told by Plato, Oh, Salon, Salon, you Hellenes are but children, and there is never an old man who is an Hellene. Salon, hearing this, said, What do you mean? I mean to say, he replied, that in mind you are all young. There is no old opinion handed down among you by ancient tradition, nor any science which is hoary with age, and I will tell you the reason of this. There have been and there will be again many destructions of mankind arising out of many causes. The fact is that wherever the extremity of winter frost or of summer sun does not prevent, the human race is always increasing at times or at other times diminishing in numbers. And whatever happened either in your country or in ours or in any other region of which we are informed, if any action which is noble or great or in any other way remarkable has taken place, all that has been written down of old and is preserved in our temples. The sacred ancestral temples preserve much sacred ancestral knowledge, wisdom, and comprehension. However, as has been said, the black messiah consciousness has been targeted for elimination, not once, but many times. Much was stolen, lost, destroyed, burned, hidden, covered up, and mistranslated. If you ask the I and I, I would tell you sincerely that the sacred ancestral elders of old provided a prophetic analysis of a creative mishap that would occur should we cease to function by the supreme laws of the sacred order of the Ankh, as revealed in Genesis 1. When one looks keenly and uses common sense reasoning, one can see clearly that Genesis 2 tells of a nature that deviates from our natural and innate origin as man, he, and she. Genesis 2 presents a monotheistic male God standing as he alone, who made Adam alone. And when this Adam got lonely with the animals, a female companion was made as an afterthought out of Adam's rib, or so we are told. This second Genesis introduced the bringers of a deviant consciousness that deviate from the divine consumption of the fruits of the tree of life, deviated from the divine union of masculine and feminine energy as man, he, and she, deviated from forwarding the multiplication of divinity into every offspring and vibration of the generation next, and as such, deviated from the divine social economic family community order. Adam and Eve were said to have been led out of the garden by this God, a jealous God, who dressed them in the skins of slaughtered animals, cursed she to birth and pain, and cursed he to toil and pain all of the days of his or her life. We're speaking about a predatory or blood spilling, flesh consuming and enslaving consciousness inbred in populations who consume of dead, devitalized and depleted energy, anointed by a God who loved the smell of burning flesh and a sacrificial blood offering on his behalf. No doubt, Genesis 2 is an attempt to sanctify the attitudes, values, behaviors and beliefs of hunting, herding, and warring flesh-consuming populations. Genesis 2 describes the same nature identified as Set in ancient Kemet, Set, the second son born of the royal family who ripped and tore his way from his mother's womb trying to come too soon, bringing a nature that separates, isolates, 
and devised to conquer and rule. Set stood in separation, isolation, and opposition against the royal family community order of man, he, and she, against his own natural and innate state of being as a child of the sun. This divisive warlike nature was spread through rape and rage, slaughter, pillaging, burning, enslavement, and colonization. Those who emerged within this mixed and mingled contaminated consciousness carried bits, pieces, and parts, half-truths, populations with many names such as Hicksuits, Hittites, Semites, and other tags and labels of those times that identified the Heberus, i.e. outsider populations, who invaded the Fertile Crescent lands of Ethiopia, the lands of higher peace. And ironically, these populations were known as being the generations born off of Adam and Eve's third son, Seth. And as we stated in presentation four, Kemetic Egyptian priest Manito recorded that the Hicksuits invaded Kemetic Egypt, installing their monotheistic warring nature as shepherd kings. If one ever wonders why there is such a vicious, heartless, and cold-blooded focus on preventing the rise of a black messiah, then pay close attention and connect the dots. Oh, the high priest, Guatemala, will give you something to step to. Yeah. Reality pushing a love supreme, our theme. Beam into this supreme truth and give your soul a power boost. Gonna tell you a story about the self deified. Pay close attention doing this exposing ride. When